Welcome to DRIVE, the start of your journey towards organisational excellence. In the next few minutes we will explore the concept of the balance scorecard and how taking a balanced view of your organisation can deliver sustainable improvement in your performance without the need of significant investment. In this example we will explore the use of the balance scorecard in a business service organisation. We will specifically focus on the links between the workforce and customers and how taking a balanced approach to management can lead to sustainable improvement in your performance. To help us on our journey towards operational excellence and to understand how to use the balance scorecard in your operations, we're going to use the DRIVE concept. DRIVE is Inspired Change's branded version of the balance scorecard and it sets out to create an easier framework to understand and implement a balance scorecard in your operations. Using a simple COGS analogy, it shows the importance of measuring and managing in a balanced way and also the importance of understanding the cause and effect linkages that drive it forward. Let's first start by understanding the components that make up the DRIVE concept. D covers the direction your organisation is taking or needs to take. R is the financial resources that you need to finance your operations. I focuses on impressing your customers, past, present and future prospects. V covers all the processes you use to deliver your service to your customers. And E is the evolution engine that helps us understand the impact of passion, performance and people in your organisation. Before considering the DRIVE concept in more detail, let's first consider why DRIVE is so important to any organisation. What happens in your business is a direct result of what you do, how you do it and when you do it. Success is often put down to being in the right place at the right time, but it's more than that. It's also about acting in the right way. So how can DRIVE help deliver a superior outcome? Well let's consider the drive analogy as a series of interlinked cogs. We've already discussed that the performance is driven by what you do, how you do it and when you do it. The best outcome is achieved when strategy and goals are defined through drive and performance is managed and encouraged back the other way. With this in mind now let's consider what your organisation might look like in terms of managing performance. As with most organisations, there's probably a significant focus on financial information, predominantly driven by monthly accounts and cash flow. You may focus on impressing your customer base, but it's probably more reactive than proactive. You possibly take a more proactive approach to managing the quality and efficiency of your processes, but it's still disproportionate to the focus on finance. Any focus on motivational learning and development is likely to be a result of an annual routine rather than outcome based investment aligning your goals to your organisation. And finally direction, strategy and long term aspirations, a low priority when time permits as you continue to fight the day to day. Now let's take time to reflect on what could be achieved with a different focus. A greater emphasis on passion, people and continuous improvement will help create a motivated workforce that will drive out inefficiencies and continually look for new opportunities. This highly efficient organisation will naturally deliver what the customer wants and when they want it and in doing so deliver it in a most cost effective way. What you end up with is a highly efficient organisation that will deliver sustainable improvement in performance, increased demand and superior results. Now with a greater understanding of the DRIVE concept, let's consider a simple practical application. To do this, visualise a pyramid that contains the elements of DRIVE stacked as shown. We've already discussed that the best outcome is where strategy is driven down through the elements and performance is driven up. This visual map will become our template for defining the areas of your organisation to be analysed, monitored and they'll highlight the themes to be addressed that will create significant improvement in performance. Now that we have a greater understanding of the cause and effect linkages between the areas of activity, let us consider in more detail the key areas of focus. Within the core goals area, the key focus is working towards your strategic goals, and these are likely to be key financial goals such as profit or cash, but they could also focus on other strategic aims such as growing market share. 
The next level of focus is your financial goals and specifically those that underpin your strategic goals. Below this we focus on the customer metrics. A customer will buy based on your service offering, your reputation and finally your relationship with them. This section is very much focused on meeting the needs of the customer. Next is the vehicle of the organisation and the way in which you deliver your service to the customer. Again three areas need to be considered. First, those processes directly involved in providing the service to your customer. Secondly, all those departments, processes and services, whilst not directly involved in delivering the service, form a very important part of ensuring the company can function. And finally, the management of safety quality environment throughout the organisation. At the bottom, underpinning the above activities, are the metrics measuring leadership, people and the progress of continuous improvement initiatives. This now completes our key focus map. Now that we have identified the key focus areas, let's consider the pyramid in a bit more detail. The diagram has now been evolved to show a basic Excel dashboard showing some suggested measurement for a service based model. The process starts with the goal of the organisation and this is the centre of the strategic objectives. Ultimately this goal is what the entire organisation will be aligned behind. The next layer is the financial goals. These measures show those that contribute the most to delivering the strategic purpose of the organisation and a sample is shown here. The following layer considers what the customer values in your organisation. Firstly, whether the services being offered meet their needs. Next is the organisation's reputation and image. Finally comes customer relationship and in this area we focus on customers past, present and future prospects and consideration is given to customer satisfaction, specifically surveying their opinion and any complaints. Next to the metrics that focus on your internal processes. Firstly, how you deliver your service from planning through to completion. In this area, we're specifically focusing on the efficiency of the internal order handling process. We also consider the impact of the organization from processes outside and the impact these have on how you operate. And finally, the effectiveness of managing health, safety and environmental management systems. The final part of the pyramid is split into two key areas, and these are focusing on those that deliver the performance of your organisation. Here we're looking at the people and the continuous improvement operations. Within the people section, there is a clear focus on skills and passion. First is passion, which covers the level of morale in your organisation and the effectiveness of internal communications, and both are inherently linked. Consideration and focus is also given to the health and well-being of the staff. The other area of review is the skills capability of every staff individual, from temporary operative to the CEO. A detailed skills matrix covering technical and soft skills, industry and product knowledge will highlight any skills gaps. The final part of the bottom layer of the pyramid is the continuous improvement. Focus here is on capital investment to improve your operations and again close focus on expected returns, both financial and non-financial are critical. This template will enable us to review and monitor a diverse set of measures that collectively will highlight themes running through your organisation. If these are managed effectively it will drive the quality of your operational capabilities. Now let's consider how a management team might use a scorecard. As a brief example of the scorecard in use, the dashboard has been highlighted with some sample data. The leadership team in this scenario are looking to drive forward the performance of their strategic objectives and deliver growth to the organisation. They have identified some issues that relate to performance KPIs of their operational capabilities and this is constraining the volume of work that can be handled and the turnover. Continual tracking of the measurement across the whole scorecard starts to show some of the problems deeper within the organisation and these could be potentially driving the quality of the service being delivered. Skill shortages and issues with well-being are being flagged up in the people section of the scorecard and this is compounded by staff overtime and subcontract work volumes being flagged in the operational capabilities section. Further investigation has shown that due to skill shortages, staff are working longer hours to cope with demand. Sickness is resulting from the additional hours, meaning other staff have had to work even more hours to cover for their colleagues. This has pushed up spends against budget due to additional overtime. 
In addition to this, operatives are experiencing difficulty with the resources available, and this has meant operatives are not being fully utilised. Work is being outsourced to a subcontractor to cope with demand. Projects focused on improving resource supply are also delayed, and this is hampering improvements to the service level. Despite the drive to deliver more service jobs, the organisation is now underperforming compared to the resources available. The leadership team can now centre activities on dealing with these root causes and track the impact of changes through the scorecard as these improvements take place. The previous sample has been taken from our basic Excel scorecard models. These models can be implemented on your systems so that you retain complete control over the data and their use. Each dashboard can be bespoke to your organisation, ensuring that the metrics used are relevant to your operations. Each model comes with three basic screens, which is a front dashboard showing a snapshot of your organisation at a reporting point in time, a tracker screen showing the progress your organisation is making, and an input screen. The inputs can be further developed, linking into other data sources, or expanded to show further drilling down of your supporting data. Again, this information is bespoke to your organisation and available budget. To ensure complete alignment through your organisation, multi-layer scorecards can show how each operational level within your business is performing against strategic objectives. Scorecards can be aligned underneath reporting layers, providing the opportunity to consolidate up performance and to drill down into detail. They also enable a clear cascade of objectives and performance expectations. We have now come to the end of our presentation on how to use a balanced scorecard in a business service organisation. We hope you can see how a scorecard approach will give a greater understanding of your operations and how to align your organisation behind your core goals.